Okay, now let's add the configurations for the Postgres container. Again, the first thing we want to do is declare the image. In this case, the image is Postgres, and we're going to use version 14.2. Uh, now we define the image, then the command that runs when Postgres starts, which is going to be Postgres uh, hyphen C and max connections equals 200. So the number maximum number of connections, this is just an arbitrary number that I chose. Uh, it depends um, on your use case, what you want to use. So command is done and then the volume. So volumes are where data is stored. So when data is stored in the Postgres database, we want it to be stored somewhere. And that's where volumes come in. So I'm going to define our volumes here, which will just be PG uh, data. Let's call it key cloak demo. And then this will be mapped to internally in the Docker container. This will go to var lib Postgres SQL slash data. And, and then let's go and define uh, environment variables. Again, we need some environment variables here. So the first one we want to do is a Postgres DB. Uh, this is the name of the database, and this should match what you defined earlier. So up here we see we have the database name, it's key cloak. And then we'll do the same thing for all the key, uh, all the um, database specific things. We'll have to make sure they match here. So the first variable that the Postgres container or image needs is the Postgres db which is the name of the db and then we want the postgres is a name or user rather and these actually so these environment variables if you go to like uh, the docker repository you'll see that that it, the, the image this image requires specific variable to start and three of them are postgres db postgres user and then the postgres password so uh, the user here again we will match what you have up there which is key cloak and then the Postgres password, which I will just call, uh, what do you call up here? So password, again, same thing. So we're done the environment variables. And then now the health check, which is what is going to match up here. So when you say, we well, have this precondition here that it depends on, and the condition is that the service is healthy. So that this service healthy is going to depend on this health check. And what I'm going to do here is say exit zero. So exit zero basically means successful and it's healthy. So anything other than exit as zero means it's not ready or it's not healthy. Um, so when the container starts, when this is Postgres underscore key clock demo starts, it takes a while to finally like spin up and they're ready to receive connections. And during that time, we don't want this container to be trying to start as well because it's going to fail and everything will shut down. So what I want to do is like make sure that We'll keep this running, the Postgres container will run, run, run until when exit zero has been achieved. Then the key clock demo service, our container can actually start up. So that's what this test means. Next, we're going to add the ports that the Postgres container is going to run on. Um, we'll do, um, Say five, four, three, six, which is external port. Uh, so if you want to connect to this database, let's say you have a database client like DBiva, this is the port it would connect to. But then internally, this is going to run on the, on the default Postgres port, which is five, four, three, two. And finally, for this Postgres uh, config, we need to configure the uh, network. Again, this network has to match what's up here with the say with a key clock service. So I'll just copy and paste that here because I need to communicate on the same network. So that's done. And then now we need to define the volume. So we define the volumes. Uh, we declare the volumes here, like, but we didn't define anything. So here we need to come and like actually define them. So here we have that's the uh, that's the volume you want. Uh, where did it go? So this is the one you want here volume only want up until the colon on the hyphen either and then for the networks what I want to define 
uh, app. No, sorry. Key cloak, demo, dev, network. And the driver will be the bridge. All right, so now we're done configuring our Docker Compose file, and we should be able to start the Docker container for Keycloak, which will in turn also start the Docker Postgres container, and we can navigate to the browser and be able to log in with um, the account that we created here. So let's go ahead and run this uh, Docker Compose file. Um, I created a simple script that essentially does that. It changes the directory into the app folder. And if you look on the left here, we have the app folder inside of which we have the Docker Compose file. And then it runs this Docker Compose down and then which shuts down the Docker Compose, uh, the containers, if they're running, if there's any that are running. And then Docker Compose app um, hyphen D, which spins up Docker Compose containers that are defined in here and then runs them as a daemon and then just prints out, you know, build complete. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we're getting an error talking about something related to the volume. So let's come here and see what the volume section says. So it, I think this looks correct. Um, volumes and this is Postgres click of demo. Okay, so in here, I think maybe something to do with this space. So let's try that and see. that seemed to work so now we're waiting for it to uh spin up the postgres uh container and then to spin up the key flow container and you should be able to go into a browser and do localhost 8890 and get the login page for key cloak okay so that's done running now let's see if key cloak is running on our localhost so we're going to the browser and try to access the Keycloak admin portal, which is running on our local host at port 8890. Looks like it's running. We log in with our credential that is set in Docker Compose. And indeed, we're in now. So Keycloak is officially running on our local host. And we set this all up using uh, Docker Compose. So this is convenient because now if you have a uh, version control system you can just check in this code and developers can just check it out um, and spin up key cloak using a simple script and be up and running in no time so this is highly highly convenient and that is all thank you for watching